After making the jump from Saturday Night Live to the big screen with Wayne's World and its sequel, Mike Myers hit pay dirt with his James Bond parody character Austin Powers in three wildly successful movies. He also served as the unforgettable voice of the Green Ogre Shrek for four films and a series of spin-offs. But then, as if Myers himself had received the happily ever after promise to his ogre incarnation, he seemed to drop off the face of the earth. Or at least the face of Hollywood. What happened to turn an unstoppable comedy juggernaut into a virtual recluse? Here's why Mike Myers doesn't get many movie offers anymore. I've lost my mojo! Now is the time on Sprockets when we sue. Myers' blazing hot career hit a cool patch in 2000 when he walked away from Dieter, another SNL sketch inspired film that would have had him reprise the role of the quirky German host of the fictional show Sprockets. According to ABC News, Dieter was to be Myers' follow up to his second Austin Powers film, The Spy Who Shagged Me. But Myers bailed on the production, citing issues with the script, which, interestingly enough, he'd co written. A series of lawsuits followed. Universal sued Myers for $5 million, then the production company making the film Imagine Entertainment sued Myers for an additional $30 million, Myers then countersued everyone, citing violations to his right of privacy, abuse of process, and fraud on the part of Universal. Eventually, they all dropped their respective lawsuits, and they even agreed to work together on another project, the live-action adaptation of the Dr. Seuss classic The Cat in the Hat. But that didn't exactly go too well, either. This cannot end well. A bungled childhood classic while its abysmal Rotten Tomatoes rating of 10% should indicate what a flop the cat in the hat was, the devil was in the details of Meyer's take on the seminal children's classic. Almost every review cited the filmmaker's bewildering choice to infuse the tale of the mischievous feline house guest with decidedly off-tone and crude humor, but the more particularly scathing criticisms fell directly at Meyer's feet. Like in the Dallas Observer's takedown titled Kitty Litter, which stated the producers may as well have skipped the hassle of securing licensing rights and simply called this mess Mike Myers pull in fur. Ouch. I've chopped it off. Well, that's interesting because son of a bitch! Even Dr. Seuss's own wife, Audrey Stone Geisel, got involved, subsequently forbidding any more live-action adaptations of her husband's work. We're not 100% sure exactly when The Cat in the Hat became derailed, but one thing's for certain. Myers' supposed snobby behavior must have had something to do with it. Darkness Behind the Laughter in an interview with the AV Club, Myers' The Cat in the Hat co-star Amy Hill painted a pretty unflattering portrait of the film's lead. She characterized Myers as a diva who constantly made the cast and crew wait while he micromanaged the entire production. And Hill isn't the only former collaborator to rake Myers over the coals. In a 2008 EW profile of Myers, Wayne's World director Penelope Spheris got her own digs in, describing him as emotionally needy and saying he got more difficult as the shoot went along. But perhaps the most telling line from the interview was her remark, maybe he could open, like, a children's hospital to clean up his rep. He's gotta do something pretty quick. Yet another scorned cohort, Rob Freed, who produced So I Married an Axe Murderer, put things in even starker terms, telling The Telegraph, I think Mike's a visionary, but his way of getting what he wants is to threaten and express anger. All in all, it's a pretty damning list of burned professional bridges, and one that's likely not gone unnoticed by studios and future collaborators alike. No love for the love guru. Younger audiences who may not associate Myers with Austin Powers or Shrek probably recognize his name from one of his later, less-than-stellar flicks, The Love Guru. The 2008 comedy presented Myers as, well, a love guru whose dream is to be featured on The Oprah Winfrey Show. He brought his Austin Powers co-star Vern Troyer to the film along with several big names, including Justin Timberlake, Jessica Alba, and Ben Kingsley. Despite all that star power, the movie bombed hard. Against a budget of $62 million, not to mention advertising costs, the movie only brought in a worldwide gross of $40 million and change. It struggled against fellow comedy Get Smart as well as The Incredible Hulk, marking a particularly painful failure during a bad year for Paramount. Myers hasn't done much since, and it isn't hard to imagine that studios might still be a little gun-shy about handing Myers the reins to another major movie. It's a passion, not a paycheck. Myers is a legendary comedian who's shown he's got chops on both the small and big screens. For him, it's more about passion than just a willingness to show up and play the game. Maybe that's why he's turned out some surprising roles in films like Studio 54 and Inglorious Bastards. In a rare print interview with GQ, Myers described his decision to portray club owner Steve Rubel in Studio 54 by saying, I loved that character so much and loved that world. He made a similar statement in a promotional interview for Inglorious Bastards, where he basically said he took the unusually serious 
serious role just for the chance to work with director Quentin Tarantino. As plenty of other comedians have learned, it's difficult to pull off that leap from silly stuff into more serious fare. But Myers seems intent on trying, whether his fans follow him or not. Super meh. Another one of Meyer's out-of-the-box projects is his 2014 documentary Supermensch, which profiles the life of Shep Gordon, a legendary music manager whose clients ranged from Luther Vandross to Alice Cooper. In fact, according to The Guardian, shock rocker Alice Cooper served as the original connective tissue between Gordon and Myers through his cameo in the first Wayne's World movie. Myers had to meet with Cooper's manager, Gordon, and immediately took a liking to the man. Supermensch is a moving story of a professional association that turned into a wonderful friendship. Unfortunately, with a domestic box box office gross of only $213,064, it's one that likely didn't make investors any money. This goes without saying, but that's never a great thing to have to report when you've got your hand up for funding the next time around. What's going on with the gong show? On my tombstone, it will read, Here lies Tommy Bateman, British entertainer. Please check the coffin to make sure he's actually dead. Since the summer of 2017, Myers has been hosting ABC's reboot of The Gong Show, only he's been doing so in heavy disguise as fictional English comedian Tommy Maitland. Donning an intentionally bad toupee, prosthetic jowls, and baby blue contacts, Myers transformed into Maitland with so little fanfare that Myers even did press in character, refusing to admit the ruse. Months later, Myers finally opened up about his role after the show was greenlit for a second season. Myers told The Wrap, It is with great delight that I can finally admit that there is indeed a Tommy Maitland, and that I portray him. He's chosen dad life over Hollywood life. In addition to sticking to a tight schedule with his bizarre TV gig, the actor has been busy playing a couple other major roles, namely husband and father. In 2015, he and his wife Kelly Tisdale welcomed a new addition to their family, a daughter named Paulina Kathleen. She's the latest in a line of kids that includes son Spike and daughter Sunday Molly. I have three kids now. Yeah. Uh, and how old? Spike's the oldest, right? Spike is um, five. And uh, does he have a uh, Canadian accent like you? No, 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 no. Fatherhood seems pretty important to Myers. And Given how genuinely excited and happy becoming a dad has made him, it's hard to imagine that the comedy legend is eager to star in a major Hollywood production that would involve long hours and a disruptive traveling schedule. For the time being, it looks like Myers wants to stick close to his favorite cast and crew, his family. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.